In this video, we're going to talk about resonance in IR spectroscopy. First, we'll look at what exactly is resonance and how does it show up in IR spectroscopy. And then we'll look at examples of overtone peaks and Fermi resonance in IR spectra. So first, an analogy that I like to use when talking about resonance is that of a vibrating piano string, or in the case on the screen here, a cello string. Now, the first thing I want to point out is on a cello, uh, in case you didn't know this, on a cello, the bridge, and this here is the bridge, the bridge is curved. And the reason the bridge on a cello or a violin is curved is so that when you are bowing a string, you can bow an individual string without touching any of the others. So here, we're going to bow one of the cello strings. Okay, and what's going to happen here is there is a string directly next to the one being bowed that is going to start to vibrate. Now this is easier to see if we look at it from straight on. So watch carefully what happens. Pay attention to the string on the far left. That's the one we're going to bow. And then watch what happens to the second string next to it on the screen. So as you can see there, even though we are only bowing the one string, okay, we are only bowing this string here, okay, what happens is the second string starts to vibrate. That is resonance. We are not touching the second string, okay, but because it is picking up on the energy of the first string vibrating, it is going to start to vibrate or start to resonate. And the way I think about this in IR spectroscopy, or any one of these spectroscopy techniques that we're going to learn, you can think about it as the string you're bowing is your instrument. In this case, it's your IR spectrometer. The second string that is resonating, that's your molecule. And so really, all you're doing is you're using your instrument, where you're tuned to a particular frequency or a particular note, and you're looking for your molecule, or in this case, the second string, to vibrate or not vibrate. If it does vibrate, if it resonates, the information it's giving you is that that particular note or frequency is present in your molecule. Okay, So that is an example of resonance. Now, in IR spectroscopy, also we sometimes see these things uh, known as overtone peaks. And again, there's a great music analogy to understand what an overtone peak is. So. If I have a fundamental vibration, and, I, uh, and, and a great way to actually do this is on a, on a piano, if you play a major chord um, down in the low register of the piano, and then you listen very carefully, you can hear higher notes ringing out, even though you didn't play any of the keys on the piano that correspond to those higher notes. Those higher notes you're hearing are called overtones. And overtones in IR spectroscopy are exact doublings of frequencies, or we say in music that it is up an octave. And so if I take a wavelength and I cut it in half, and then I cut it in half again, as I go up on a music scale, I'm going up an octave, and that is where I hear my overtones. Where do you see this in IR spectroscopy? Well, here's an example. I have on the screen here an IR spectrum of a simple aldehyde. And the thing I want you to pay attention to is that uh, on my aldehyde, we have a fundamental vibration here that is the carbonyl peak. Okay, And so if we just draw a line down to the x-axis and see what is the frequency of that carbonyl peak. And then if we double the frequency, or move it up an octave, and look at where we end up, what we see here is when we double the frequency, just take the frequency multiply by 2, we end up over here. This little tiny peak that we're seeing on the screen here, that is an overtone peak for the carbonyl. And just like in music, if you have a fundamental vibration that you're playing very loudly, then the overtone peak is just a whisper. You can sometimes barely hear it. 
Same exact thing in IR. That fundamental vibration for the carbonyl stretch at, it looks like it's at about 1720, is very loud. Okay, It has a very large amplitude. Um, so the overtone peak is very soft, and you can see it almost buried in the baseline there, maybe barely noticeable. All right. So that is overtone peaks. And if you're ever wondering, is the peak I'm looking at on the screen an overtone peak, then all you have to do is get out a calculator, do some simple math, divide by two, and look for a fundamental vibration that um, is much louder or much more intense. And this brings us to our third topic for this video, and that is Fermi resonance. And, and what is Fermi resonance and where does it show up? And actually, on the IR spectrum on the screen, there is an example of Fermi resonance here. And it is showing up right here on the screen where we are talking about the aldehydic CH stretch. Now, remember, in an aldehyde, you have the aldehydic carbon hydrogen bond. And that vibration is like this. There is only one mode for the stretching vibration. Therefore, there should be only one peak in the IR spectrum that matches that mode of vibration. So why is it then that on the screen here it says that we have an aldehyde and we have two aldehydic CH stretches. One of them is kind of buried in there with the CH, the regular uh, sp3 hybridized CH stretches, um, but the, the arrows there are pointing to two peaks and saying, no, we've got two CH stretches for the aldehyde. How is that possible? There is only one mode of vibration. And uh, why and how this is possible? is because of something known as Fermi resonance. So Fermi resonance um, is basically defined as this. When you have two vibrational modes that, this is purely coincidence, they happen to be um, almost on top of each other, then what you get happening is that the two vibrational modes, the two energies, they feed off of each other. They mix. And in IR spectroscopy, this most often occurs um, when you have a fundamental vibration, which is loud, and an overtone peak, which normally you might otherwise not ever even notice, but if that overtone peak happens to be right close to a fundamental vibration and it starts picking up on its energy, then what can happen is the overtone peak suddenly starts to grow and grow and grow. And then also what is happening at the same time is your fundamental vibration is getting smaller and smaller and weaker and weaker. Okay, so your fundamental vibration gets smaller, your overtone gets larger, and that is an example of Fermi resonance. And so where you see this, for instance, in IR spectroscopy, let's um, look at an example here of um, an aromatic acid chloride. Okay, and so in our aromatic acid chloride, we see here a couple things. Uh, first of all, oh, well, look at this. Um, this little blip way down here to the left, I bet if you get out a calculator and do the math, you will see that that is an overtone peak for your carbonyl. Okay, so there's another example of an overtone peak. Um, then we have our aromatic um, carbon-hydrogen stretches that we see here. Um, here we have our fundamental vibration for the carbonyl for the acid chloride. That's how I knew that double that frequency up here, that's how I know this is an overtone peak. But what is going on here? What is this little peak here? Well, that little peak is an overtone peak, and normally it should be, you know, the bare tiny whisper of a peak that you might not otherwise notice. The problem, though, is it happens to be coincidentally really, really close to the fundamental vibration for the carbonyl, and so that overtone peak artificially gets enhanced and grows. And so what is it an overtone peak of? Well, you get out a calculator, you divide by two, and what you'll see is that overtone peak, if I divide by two, it's actually the overtone of this very, very pronounced fundamental vibration down here. Okay, so that's another example of Fermi resonance. Just remember, it's artificial amplification of an overtone peak that's picking up energy from a very pronounced fundamental vibration. So those are our examples. Um, we'll do one more real quickly here. This is benzaldehyde. And in benzaldehyde, um, it looks like, again, we got this little blip up here. What is that? Well, that's a simple overtone peak, and that's an overtone of the carbonyl. Just take the uh, uh, vibrational frequency of that um, bond, divide by two, and you'll see the correlation mathematically that that is, in fact, an overtone. And then 
Uh, benzaldehyde is, is really one of the best examples of Fermi resonance because here you have two very pronounced peaks that double fang for the aldehyde. Again, doesn't make sense because aldehydes only have one mode of vibration for the CH um, stretching vibration. So why do we have the double fang? Fermi resonance. And here the Fermi resonance is, it's the carbon-carbon double bond vibration that if you sort of divide by two, uh, then you will see that it is the carbon-carbon double bond vibration where the overtone peak for it is not a bare tiny whisper, it's artificially enhanced because it's picking up energy from the fundamental vibration of the aldehydic CH stretch. So those are our examples of resonance, overtone peaks, and Fermi resonance.